Dr. William Sears has been advising busy parents how to raise healthier families for over 35 years. He's still doing so today, along with three of his sons at the Sears Family Clinic in San Clemente, California. Dr. Sears and his wife Martha have authored more than 30 best-selling books on parenting and childcare. He serves as a medical consultant for parenting and baby talk magazines. His AskDrSears.com website is one of the most popular health sites on the internet. And he's worried about the state of our health. I'm excited about sharing with you what I feel are nine changes that will help your family grow happier and healthier. Your children are eating an alarming amount of junk foods and it's harming their growing bodies. And we pediatricians are seeing the consequences. It's high blood pressure, high blood sugar, high blood cholesterol, earlier and earlier in children. Not only are children's bodies getting less healthy, so are their brains. The number of drugs to pick children up or calm them down to alter their moods is increasing at an alarming rate. When parents come into my office and their child has a chronic illness such as diabetes or asthma or ADD, one of the things I want to educate them in is a new model of medical care and one I call the pills and skills model. And that means relying less on pills and more on self-help skills. How does a family develop those self-help skills? Dr. Sears offers nine simple steps to a healthier family diet. Step one, shape young tastes. I use my pediatric office as sort of a nutritional laboratory to study outcome. I noticed there was a group of, uh, of moms in my office I called pure moms. They never let a morsel of junk food enter the lips of their children for many years. And then I started following these children over the years. I noticed, wow, I don't see these kids that often because they're not as sick as often. And I found they didn't have as many school problems and attention problems. So not only were their bodies healthier, their brains were better off. And when these pure children of pure parents would get out into the real world of junk food, they didn't overdose. They develop a taste for real wholesome food. We don't have to be perfect. The occasional junk food's okay. But the more you can start those early years in programming your children toward healthier eating habits, the better. That is the beginning of the gift of health that I want you to give your children. Step two, feed your family the right carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are not bad things. In fact, children need lots of carbs to grow, to think, and to play. Children need at least 50% of their diet in the form of healthy carbs, even more if they're very active. So the same is true for older children and adults, especially the more active we are. The more active we are, the more energy we need in the form of, of carbs. But the key is they need good for your carbs not bad for your carbs. The good carbs are packaged by nature. The fruits, the vegetables, the whole grains, those are good carbs. The bad carbs come from the factory. The worst carbs are your sweetened beverages. A good carb or a good for you carb has two friends, protein and fiber. They keep the good carb from rushing into the bloodstream too fast. They steady the entry of sugar into the bloodstream so you get a nice, continual, steady supply of energy. A bad for you carb has no fiber, no protein. It rushes into the bloodstream too fast and the blood sugar goes real high and makes you jittery. And that comes way down and that roller coaster effects of highs and lows all day long is what makes us tired and grumpy. Step three. Feed your family the right fats. Just like with carbs, at all ages we need a right fat diet, not necessarily a low fat diet. This low fat craze can be unhealthy, especially for growing children. The two main nutritional deficiencies that I believe exist at all ages 
is fruits and vegetables, number one, and omega-3 fats. The best fats are seafood, especially wild salmon. Certain oils, like flax oil and olive oil. Nuts and nut butters. Seeds, like sesame seeds and sunflower seeds. And avocados. The less healthy fats come from animal fats. And the worst fats come from the factory. These are fats that have been processed and chemically changed so they make food last longer. Healthy fats are a rich source of energy. So when we run out of energy from carbs, our body dips into like a reserve fuel tank of fat. Step four, feed your family grow foods. In our family, we use the term grow foods because kids e equate grow foods with performance, running fast, getting bigger, getting stronger, getting smarter. Vegetables, legumes like peas, beans, lentils, fruits, whole grains, nuts, yogurt, eggs, and oils. You'll notice they all have one thing in common. They come from nature, not from the factory. Grow foods balance the blood sugar because they're packaged with protein and fiber and healthy carbohydrates and healthy fats. The energy gets in at a steady rate so you don't have the ups and downs of blood sugar like you would with, with non-grow foods or junk food. You can emphasize grow foods in the diet with what he calls traffic light eating. Green light foods are go for it foods, anytime foods. Those are the fruits, the vegetables, all those grow foods we found in nature. Then there are the yellow light foods. These are the sweet treats, the desserts, the ice cream, the frozen yogurt. They're a sometimes food. Then we have the red light foods. They're a no time food. The red light food says, stop, can you make a healthier choice? Step five, raise a grazer. Grazing means eating small, frequent mini meals throughout the day instead of gorging on big meals. Children are meant to graze. In fact, all ages do better and are healthier when we graze. Studies have shown that people who eat the same number of calories a day, if they break that up into five or six mini meals instead of three big meals, they tend to put on less extra body fat. One of the best ways to encourage your children to become grazers is to let them feed themselves and serve themselves. In fact, studies have shown that children tend to eat smaller portions when they serve themselves. When we serve our children, we tend to feed them adult portions. Now, what we've done in our family is to make a nibble tray. So you take all these little grow foods and you cut them up to look like children's foods. And you give them childlike names like broccoli trees, orange wheels, cooked carrot sticks. And you place that nibble tray on the child's little table. The child will play a while, come and sit and graze a bit and go on and play a while and come back and graze. At the end of the day, that little tray is empty.